So we're putting that into the water, give it a boost of iron, iron and rust promotes oxygen. And then wow, look at that, magic. A bit of iron and your plant magically recovers. Those leaves that were rotting, that were dying away, they've somehow miraculously recovered and you've got a brand new plant in your hands, fantastic. Today we're watching a video from Blossom. Blossom, in case you didn't know, is a massive DIY and hacks channel on YouTube. They've got millions of subscribers. And their video is very popular, 12 indoor gardening hacks that make you throw up your hands up and sprout, has had 38 million views and 300,000 likes. So the hacks in here must be good. So let's have a look. So it looks like we're starting off with a banana, sticking your finger in. And that's an aloe vera and they're burying Ah, so they think that the potassium here from the banana, if you stick your aloe vera in it, uh, will make it grow quicker. Potassium speeds up growth, not really true. I don't think sticking a banana in the soil with a plant inside is really gonna do anything. It's not gonna break down quickly. And instead it's just gonna create mold in the soil from the, when the banana rots. So it's not really a good idea to do that, I don't think. And of course it magically grows into a massive aloe vera. So we've got a tea bag next. Gonna open it up, we're gonna put a, is that a bean? Mung, mung bean maybe? Seed into the tea bag. I'm guessing it's gonna magically sprout. Let's have a look, put it onto a plate. Mm, that time lapse looks a bit fake to me. Nitrogen in tea promotes growth. I'm not sure about that time lapse. It looks like the tea bag is in frame and the sprouting seedling is something else entirely didn't actually sprout from that tea bag. So that's a little bit suspect. Whether this is gonna work, it might work. There's, you know, it's a rooting medium probably. It's quite moist, it's probably inert. Um, I don't think there's much nitrogen in there from a used tea bag that's been boiled. So why not just put the seed into soil like you normally would and it will sprout just fine. Plastic container. Nice, nice camera work there, putting a hole in it. So we're putting a plant in. Upside down plants, why are we doing that? Absorb more nutrients. I like the little emoji giving us a little wink in the top right corner there. So this one looks quite nice, uh, but I don't know why they're upside down. Don't really understand it. They're not gonna absorb more nutrients. Don't know why they're saying that and it, look, it looks like to me that loads of dirt and loads of water, when you come to water it, because they will need water, it's just gonna run through and go all over your carpet. So it's gonna, just gonna create a mess. So not the best hack, I don't think. You're much better off just putting it in a normal pot and putting it on a windowsill and having it the right way up rather than upside down. Let's continue on then. So we've got a couple of hangers now. What are we doing with these hangers? Putting them on the wall. There's, what plant is that? That looks like, that's an ivy, I think, an English ivy. It looks like they have created a nice trellis, indoor trellis to hang on your wall so you can grow the ivy along it. That's a very good hack, actually. I really like that one. Probably will take a long time to fill in, but if you've got enough patience, you've got a few years that you're staying in your home, then quite a nice little idea, a nice little hack. That's a good one from Blossom. So it looks like we've got a beaten up aloe vera next. So what are they saying about this? Roots rotting, unhappy face, pantyhose. Pantyhose in a decorative pot. Where are we going with this? So stick your aloe vera in, put the soil around it, and give it a water, drains excess water. Hmm. So I guess they're trying to create a reservoir at the bottom so the roots don't sit in a reservoir, much like you would if you had pebbles at the bottom of your of your pots. Kind of, that's been debunked by many people, including myself, I've got a video on that. So I'm not sure this hack is really doing much for the plant, because you can still overwater your plant if you put too much water in, and the bottom, bottom of the pot, bottom of the plant, with the pantyhose, sits in the excess water, so it's not really gonna do much. A much better way to do this is just put your plant into a plastic nursery pot, with drainage holes inside a decorative pot. So you can give it a water, put it in there, and then you can easily get rid of excess water, much easier way than rather than messing around with ladies' pantyhose. 
So we've got a masonry jar, I've got a plant. What plant is that? Uh, I'm not sure what plant that is. If you know, let me know in the comments. So we're spraying it, spraying the soil, and we're putting, ah. So we are making a closed terrarium for this plant. So that will work, uh, quite a nice idea. Not much oxygen going in there, so maybe some root, um, some rotting problems in there, a bit of mold might develop if you don't allow oxygen in there. Also, the size of that plant was already at the top of the, of the container, so I'm not sure this is gonna last that long. It's gonna outgrow and it's gonna hit the roof of the container, so you probably need to start off with a smaller plant. Plants in jars, water, recycle water, that's true. You won't need to water it because the moisture, it's a closed container, so the moisture will just keep recycling and it'll water the plant effectively. Self-watering ecosystem, so yeah, I can get behind that. So we've got a sponge, we're cutting in half, we're putting it on the side of the pot, and evenly distributes water. So we're hoping that we're just gonna water the sponge, I guess, on the side of the pot, and it's gonna wick into the soil slowly, evenly distributes water. I can kind of get behind this. It's a nice idea. It's kind of similar to my bottom watering idea where I add water to the bottom of the of a saucer or a decorative pot and then the plastic nursery pot with drainage holes will wick up the moisture evenly through the soil. I always advise that on my channel. Similar idea, but for some reason they've got it on the side of the plant. I'm not really sure why. I would have that sponge at the bottom of the plant and it will do the same thing. So not too bad, but I'd have it on the bottom of the plant. And we've got a cork, we're drilling a hole. What are we gonna do with that then? Is that a magnet? Oh, what was that? They look like little succulents. So little succulent planters, it looks like, that you can stick on your fridge. Quite a cute idea, I guess. Uh, no soil in there, so I'm not sure how long these cuttings are going to last. They weren't rooted, I don't think. So probably going to, only going to last a few weeks at best. Quite a nice little idea. Um, I'd be more inclined to actually put it into a pot with soil that you can water and somehow get a magnet onto that and then stick it onto, onto your fridge. So we've got some foil, folding it in half. What are we doing? Is that an ice lolly stick? What are we doing with this? Ooh. Plants grow evenly by reflecting light. In theory, this can work. I think you're better off using a mirror if you can. But I guess, little boost in light on the other side of the plant. You've got the light from that side, from the, the window, reflecting onto the foil that kind of reflects back onto the dark side of the of the flower, not the dark side of the moon, the dark side of the plant, sorry, not flower. I'm not sure how much of a, an effect that's gonna have on the plant. Not too bad, I guess. How to check for pH soil levels. Dump a load of vinegar in, apparently, into your soil. That's just gonna destroy the, the soil, so why bother? What else have we got? Water, baking soda. Why does the baking soda bubble up like that, just from soil? I'm not sure that's gonna work. Um, uh, just use soil out of a pack, it's gonna be fine. I wouldn't mess around by putting vinegar into your soil, it's not really gonna work. A blue caterpillar on an indoor plant, they say. It's quite rare to get caterpillars on an indoor plant. If it's a hack to get rid of that, I think all you do is just pick it up and chuck it outside. Don't need to kill it. I mean, it's not doing any harm, apart from eating your plant. Let's see what they've got though. So they've got some hot peppers and they're making a solution, I guess, to spray onto the plants. The holes on those leaves look a bit suspect. So they sprayed, they sprayed the soil. Mm, I'm not sure that's gonna do much. I mean, it can deter some pests, maybe spider mites and frips, but caterpillars, I'm not sure about. You're better off kind of making a cinnamon solution, I find. I've, I've mentioned that on my channel before. Um, I wouldn't put it on the soil though. I'd sp actually spray it on the leaves. So what have we got now? We've got some rope, we've got a plant. It looks like we're making a macrame hanger, which is a great little hack. I've not done that before. A homemade macrame hanger. I normally buy them from Ikea. They've got a nice selection of 
Macrame hangers in IKEA, all different colours, quite expensive. So if you've got some spare rope lying around, you can make your own. And that's a, uh, they look really interesting. I really like that. Really good hack from Blossom. So we've got an ice cube tray. We've got some succulents. We've got some lolly sticks. We're filling up the tray with succulents. Get another one next to it. A picture frame. Looks really nice, doesn't it? But where's that dirt gonna go? Is that gonna come onto the floor gradually as these succulents grow and as you need to water them? And how do you water them? I guess you, you would spray them. Mm. I'm not sure about having plants on walls like that because it just creates a mess. Water, dirt, all sorts are gonna just drip onto the floor. So looks really nice, interesting idea. It just maybe needs a little bit more work. Ice cream cone. Uh, why the ice cream cone? I don't get it. Just just put the seedling into soil, put a dome over it if you want to help with humidity to increase the time and success rate of germination, but you don't need to mess around with ice cream cones. Let's see if they say why, why we're we doing this. Did you, did you see the mold on that cone? That's just gonna attract pests like you wouldn't believe. Fruit flies will come knocking on, the, on that door. Cone acts as a biodegradable seed starter. Don't believe it. Move on. Not sure about that one. So we've got some spring onions or some scallions. Got an egg carton. Uh, so I guess that's, I guess that's a little propagation setup that they've set up there. Quite a nice little idea actually to create, use something from something that you're gonna throw away, like an egg, a plastic egg carton. And it's a closed one, so it's gonna create some level of humidity in there. And it'll be quite good for seed starting and for propagating plants. So we've got a dead plant or a dying plant. What was that? Got a rusty old nail, put it in some water. So I'm guessing we're going for the iron in the rusty nails. Give it a shake, let it dissolve in there, put holes in the tops of the cap. What plant is that? Is that an aglionema? Is that a Chinese, Chinese evergreen? So we're putting that into the water, give it a boost of iron, iron and rust promotes oxygen. And then wow, look at that, magic. A bit of iron and your plant magically recovers. Those leaves that were rotting, that were dying away, They've somehow miraculously recovered and you've got a brand new plant in your hands. Fantastic. So we've got some milk in a bowl. Soil. Ooh. Oof. And we're putting that on top. Calcium in milk acts as a fertilizer. It doesn't act as a fertilizer, it just gives it a boost, calcium, but I'm not sure about putting a milky soil solution on top of your soil because fruit flies are gonna love that. You can eat all sorts of bugs. Don't do this hack. Got an avocado. So I guess this is sprouting the avocado seed and turning it into a plant. I've actually done this. I've got two over there that are successfully sprouted. So you prop it onto, like it showed in the video, you prop it onto a container, water underneath. A root will come into the water within a few weeks and then you'll get a, a central stem sprout out a few weeks after that. And I've got a couple of those. Got a lemon. Are we gonna do the same thing with the lemon seeds? Turn it into a lemon plant? Why is it in an eggshell? I have no idea. I guess they're saying the calcium from the eggshell is gonna somehow help, maybe biodegrade. Don't bother, just put it into a pot with some soil and it will do that just fine. I've actually got a video on sprouting a lemon seed I didn't use eggshell, just put it straight into soil and they sprouted and they're successfully growing out. Honey, okay. So honey can you can be used as a rooting hormone, quite effective, because um, it does uh, keep pathogens away. And it prevents root rot on your stem that you've made a cutting on, but I don't know why we're putting it in a potato. What's the nutrient in a potato that they're gonna try and tell us works? Again, you bury it in soil because that's what you do with everything. So the roots magically appear. Honey stimulates roots. Doesn't stimulate roots, stimulate roots. It just prevents them rotting. That's the only thing honey does. It doesn't make them grow any faster or anything. 
potato fertilizers. I think with the potato, all you're gonna do there is just get more potatoes, because they're just gonna, you're burying a potato and they're just gonna seed and grow, develop roots, and you're just gonna get more potatoes. So we've got a water bottle, stick some holes in. That's a jade plant. Okay, so it looks like we're doing some leaf propagations of a jade plant. So we're putting some water at the bottom, and then what happens? They sprout within four weeks. I'll give it a little bit longer. That was quite a nice little idea. I like that. Quite a space saving idea. Just putting the leaves into a bottle and then the humidity, I guess, from the water will go up and it will be enough for them to develop roots. Easy peasy. I like it. I might try that. What was that? A peace lily? A dying peace lily? Hair? Burying hair, nitrogen in hair promotes nutrients and as if by magic, the peace lily recovers. It's like the second coming of the peace lily. Just because you stuck some hair in the soil, all that plant needed was a drink. It was dry, dry as a bone. That's why it was dying. Give it a drink and it will perk up. And that's what they probably did for it to perk up. It wasn't the hair. The hair is not gonna biodegrade in the soil in enough time to give it that kind of boost. So we've got a bottle, we've got a coffee filter. What are we doing? We are making a little hanger, it looks like. Nice. Nice idea. When you water the top one, it trickles down to the bottom too. And the only thing in there is that the top one will have to be quite saturated for it to drip and irrigate, especially the bottom one. I think there's going to be an uneven amount of water in each fruit, in each one of those plants. So not sure about that. Hydrogen peroxide, water. Uh, no, 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 no. They don't. Hydrogen peroxide is good for roots, plant roots, but it won't heal rotting roots. Once roots rot, that's it. They rot. They don't come back to life like they're showing here, before and after. Doesn't happen. You have to cut the roots out and then new roots will develop. So that's, a, that's very misleading. Boiling some eggs. We are using the egg water. I hope they cooled that down before chucking it into a plant. It would be quite nice if they made that clear to their viewers because you don't want to be boiling eggs and then chucking that into your plant soil. That will kill your plant. But the calcium keeps soil healthy. I've got the similar plant hack on my channel so I can get behind that one. No problem whatsoever. So we've got... Uh, what are we doing here? Orange. What are we doing? What was the orange for? What do we do with the orange? I don't see an orange plant there. I've no idea why we use the orange. Anyway, there's, so the issue I have here, it looks like they've created some sort of, some sort of um, planter out of canvas. The canvas on that looks absolutely pristine, like they've just put the plants in. If you put soil and water into that canvas, it's gonna be brown within seconds. So don't bother, misleading again. So we've got a bell, bell pepper next, We're taking the seeds, putting soil in the pepper half, and we are, mm, why? Why bother including the pepper? That's just going to create confusion, it's going to create mould, it's going to create rot as it rots into the soil. It's not going to do anything for the, for the seeds and the seedlings. Don't bother. Again, just take the seeds, put them into soil and they will develop into a plant. No need to muck around with these silly little hacks. Got some corn. Ooh, what are we doing? Is this, if we're starting these as a seed, that corn was cooked and I'm not sure corn kernels will grow if they're cooked. Especially if you stick a, a skewer right in the heart of it. That's just gonna kill those seeds. So that we're burying it and as if by magic, they are growing successfully. Don't believe that at all. Tomato, sliced tomato. Again, they're like putting the whole thing into soil. That's just gonna rot and it's just gonna attract loads of flies, loads of fruit flies. They're just gonna come to that, swarm all over it and you're just gonna have an absolute mess, rot in the soil. It's just gonna be a terrible nightmare. Place in an area of six to eight hours of sun daily 
and they will magically grow. You're better off just taking the seeds out of the tomato and just sticking it into soil and then they'll germinate, no problem. As long as you look after them correctly, put them in a bright spot, no issues whatsoever.